Building on Vetive is a project uh, piloted by IM Movement uh, where we focus on uh, local level deployment of the Vetive system. We set out to, to understand Vetiver Grass and to explain all that it can do. That has been sort of explained and shown a lot internationally as well, and there's been a growing recognition in Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. But the reality is that in these countries, Trinidad and other Caribbean countries, for them to take this up as a solution that they want to promote and use more, everybody wants to see local case studies. So that's what this whole project was based upon. It was based upon sort of finding the most valuable case studies to showcase its different uses. It was really a people-centered project. However, it really focused on heavy data capture to try to build confidence. So a very important and key aspect of this project was monitoring and evaluation. How can we understand vetiver grass and the benefits of vetiver grass from a local Caribbean perspective? Because there are, there's a multitude of uh, academic papers on the vetiver system and on the benefits of vetiver grass but there's not uh, any from a really Caribbean perspective. We want to know if we're doing things efficiently, effectively, how sustainable certain things are within the design of the project, how involved some persons have been in the design of the project. So that's more traditional um, inquiries in monitoring and evaluation, but within IM movement and within the project itself, most of the persons involved have really had that, um, like, I, I don't want to make monitoring and evaluation sound like this far-fetched thing, but it is something that everybody has been doing, everybody has been tracking things, everybody has, like, have that natural initiative to go about things systemically. This is just an example of the Vetive plot and one of the sensors in the Vetive. The IDB, which would have been the donor agency, they they could see, at least from the results, that you know they could trust this implementing agency to to achieve results, and they don't need to be too fearful of like misspending because the spends would just go back into results again. Something that we're working with the IDB that was so special is it gave us a level of flexibility that we've not quite had before in other projects from the standpoint of being able to, obviously from the outside, understand what we wanted to accomplish with the project, but throughout the life of the project, being able to, to sort of explore opportunities as they came up and go after them, which is a critical aspect of this project. In actually having the resources to actually deploy an academic study, I approached the University of the West Indies as the project coordinator. Upon meeting the professors in person, I would have actually explained to them what our ideas are, uh, what we were passionate about finding out about the grass. That would allow the university to uh, pilot these investigations along with our technical inputs. Initially, we were contacted by IM Movement to work in collaboration and a partnership with them on some of the existing projects that are funded by the IDB and I think also IWECO and CRIF. Uh, we're doing some really novel and really exciting work in two areas. So one is in the sand and gravel quarries in Sandy Grandi in Trinidad, where we're looking at how vetiver could be used as a reforestation tool, so this nature-based natural tool for restoring forests. 
And the other project, we're looking at using vetiver to reduce runoff and erosion and try to improve um, infiltration, so how easily water makes its way back into soil on some really, really steeply sloped landscapes. So those are two of the main types of projects that we're working on um, in collaboration with, with IM Movement. Just stop the water from falling, make any mud fall on the roots. Exactly. We just recognize there's so many different areas of vetiver grass to study. This project being three, four years long and allowing that time for a full relationship to develop as well as providing the resources to support it has truly now given us a chance to finally produce um, studies in Trinidad and Tobago that are based on the various aspects of vetiver grass, which we know will improve the overall recognition and acceptance of this as a solution. Vetiver grass, it has shown at all levels that it removes more moisture than every other type of intervention. By removing moisture in terms of the shear strength of a soil, it is a function of something called the friction angle, the normal force, which is basically the weight of the soil acting downwards, and something called apparent cohesion. Apparent cohesion is basically like suction in the soil. So a dry soil will have a high apparent cohesion. A wet soil will have minimal or very low. So what that means is the higher the apparent cohesion, the stronger the soil is. So the less water it has, the more that is removed means that the stability is increased. So essentially, vetiver grass is so far, based on the analysis that we have done, it seems to be a, a, a reasonable approach to regulating moisture in soils that are heavy clays. The lines represent the different plots and the red line is actually the rainfall and these lines at the top here show the different plots. If you look carefully, the vetiver plot at 20 centimeters throughout the duration of the study, is, it's significantly lower than all the others. There is some um, fluctuation with the coconut matting and natural vegetation going a little bit below it, but that's only at the surface. For every other layer at 40 cm, so the moisture content here is just about 68, 70, whereas everything else is between, uh, say, 80 to almost 100. We're going to come in and measure what we call hydraulic conductivity, and that basically measures how quickly water moves through the soil. So it, it measures how it goes down vertically, but also horizontally. So we want to see how the plant roots and the, the root establishment of the vetiver actually influences that aspect. We also do a lot of collection of uh, water samples. So we collect rainfall every week to two weeks. And what we do with that rainfall sample, with those rainfall samples, is that we collect them in very small glass vials and we use them to measure what we call isotopes. So when it rains, the rainfall has a different chemical signature and using the different signatures from week to week, we're able to trace and understand how the vetiver is using water. And we can see where in the soil profile the water is being used from. My part in this project is looking at the hydrological impact of vetiver on the quarry to see if vetiver is assisting plant growth. So one of the major things that we sample is currently rainfall and we're looking at the isotope signal of the rainfall. We collect the samples in vials and we refrigerate them until we've collected enough to carry off to a lab. When we get back the samples from the lab, we'll be looking at the data and essentially trying to see if vetiver is having any influence on um, bringing up groundwater, especially during the dry season, and that is what the isotope signals will show us. My main focus is on soil science. I have been focusing on vetiver grass and the potential 
as a fighter remediator for contaminated waters, particularly leachate from landfills. We're going to be focusing on the Forest Park landfill, and it's uh, what we classify as an unsanitary landfill. So when rain falls or some of the stuff that would have gone to the landfill would be filled with water or anything like that, that water is just being leached into our waterways and they can pose a risk of contaminating humans and the environment on a whole. We're actually not going to plant it. We're going to have it on a floating plantoon with the liquid medium under it. And you could call it a kind of hydroponic setup. And we're going to analyze the water before and after to determine how much of a difference the vetiver really made with respect to heavy metals and even things like nitrogen and phosphorus that could be deleterious if they were to be leached into the environment. to see the academic team interacting with the community members who were involved in the project um, where they were actually able to learn and appreciate what was being done from a study aspect. And I think that was really important for them as well to be able to kind of recognize the value of their work, you know, in terms of them seeing, you know, and understanding more what they're doing and how that could possibly impact the environment, impact the soil, impact the water. So I think that the sort of presence of the UE teams on site you know, um, while capturing results, definitely had a direct role in actually increasing the overall appreciation of the project by stakeholders involved. And that's really important because the projects we do are very much about stakeholder education, awareness, engagement, and ultimately these solutions being appreciated to continue and go on. And um, overall, I think everybody really felt that kind of sense of greater appreciation coming out of the studies. Betty Vegras has been found to be very useful, not just locally. We are now trying to quantify the effects and so on locally, but if you were to examine uh, the research that has been done with Betty Vegras from a global level, you would have seen it as a, a major intervention that is utilized as something that is cost effective, something that is you know, easy to access, easy to install. The project itself is, is quite unique in the sense that it honestly tries to demonstrate results, social, economic, environmental results that are afforded by Vetiv and the Vetiv system through various applications across many different terrains in Trinidad and Tobago. A really key factor that um really played into the deployment of VOV would have to be, and if I had to pick one word for it, I would pick synergies. The success that has come out of VOV was only possible through our linkages with all our partners. The dedication and commitment that some of the partners have in ensuring that some of the, um, some of the results that we're after is actually produced, and not only produced, but produced well, um, that was very inspiring and encouraging. I truly think it's the passion of the team and the appreciation for what we're doing and the care to see the environment improving and communities in a better place that made this whole project a success. This entire project seemed to kind of revolve around trust and confidence in a solution and really scaling results to uh, where it is right now. This is the way forward for places like in the Caribbean, uh, for, for really improving understanding of environment, providing good types of solutions, uh, to improving, you know, we're looking at water resources, carbon storage, improved biodiversity, all of these different types of things we, we get out of these projects. 
it shows that vetiver could really empower a community, could really change someone's life, right? So just to the cost-saving benefits uh, um, provided by the plants when you use correctly, that could really, it could really inspire someone to change a situation where they know for sure that they may not be able to um, be able to engage or be able to use the hard engineered concrete solution or they may not be able to afford a, a wall. Uh, this natural solution is here.